Let's get into my latest 2022 NFL mock draft. Updated with all the latest draft order based, of course, on the current one. So please, I beg of you, no complaining in the comments section. Number one pick, the Detroit Lions. I've got them going with Kayvon Thibodeau, the edge rusher out of Oregon. Quarterbacks in need. It's a bad quarterback class. I will simply give them the best available player. Number two, the Houston Texans. Evan Neal out of Alabama. Maybe edge, maybe corner. Lots of routes they could go. I like Laramie Tunsil. I don't like much else here in terms of the Texans' offensive line. So give them some help there. Protect whoever their quarterback is long term. Number three, Derek Stingley. Uh, he has widely been viewed as the number one corner. I, I would not be surprised if I came in lower than him on the consensus. Awesome. His freshman year. Best corner in the country. Since then, not as good. Now, that's okay because you know what he, what he can do, but mm, he might have gone number two if not for that lesser year. So he goes to three. He and Darius Slay, a good fit in Philly. The Jets at number four, who could also really use a cornerback like, um, like, like Derek Stinley, instead dropped down a little bit here. And I will go with Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan. Now, he and his teammate, David Ojabo, I think I got the last name right, have been awesome this year for Michigan. I almost put a job on this. He's eligible, but I think he goes back. Maybe. We'll see. The Jets need pass rush help. They've got Carl Lawson back from injury next year. Beyond that, I don't trust that edge group. Hutchinson, Quinn Williams, and Carl Lawson, if healthy, could form a very, very dangerous uh, call it one, two, three punch up front for New York. So who is your favorite prospect in this year's NFL draft? No wrong answers, folks. Whatever one you prefer the most, it is an opinion question after all. So I got a bunch of more picks to come. But if you get that ad break here on YouTube, then head on down and let me know who your favorite prospect is this season. Number five, Kyle Hamilton. Uh, the Jag safeties aren't bad, but Hamilton is my second favorite player in this year's draft. He is built like Derwin James. And he kind of plays more like Earl Thomas. That combo is very rare. Take the best player on the board. Get an impact playmaker in the secondary. Okay, quarterback time. Um, disclaimer, bad class. I, I really want to like Matt Corral. I, I think that the, the, the arm strength is there. The ability is there. The upside is there. In a normal class, though, He's not going number six overall. The quarterbacks are going to get pushed up because of the need. I like Matt Corral. He is, for now, quarterback 1A, 1B for me. There's still a half season to go, so I'm not putting anything in stone. I like the upside, but I like him a lot more maybe as like 36 overall than number six overall. So I want to hear from you guys too because I think there's a lot of different routes you could possibly go here. Who is the best quarterback in this year's NFL draft. You can still change your mind as the season goes on, but I want to hear from you. Pick the best quarterback prospect for this year's NFL draft. Number seven, Kenyon Green, the Eagles. Look, Kelsey's going to retire. You're going to put Landon Dickerson at center. Let's get some, I, I think, interior O-line help. I think Kenyon Green is a great football player. I think he's more of an interior guy in the NFL. I, I would love to have Kyle Hamilton go here for Philly, but he, of course, went number five. Number eight, the Giants, Tyler Linderbaum. I don't need to see much else out of him. Uh, this, for me, is the Quinton Nelson of this year's class. Like, he plays a less valuable position, but he is a very clean eval. He's awesome at football, and the Jets, des or the Giants, I mean, desperately need a good center. I think he should be a top five pick. Now, he falls to eight because of positional value, but talent-wise, for me, it's Thibodeau, Hamilton, then Linderbaum on my way-too-early big board. Now, today's show is powered by our friends over at BetUS. I've made a lot of money this year betting on the NFL, and you guys can too. So head over to chatsports.com bet and use promo code NFL. Daily. It gets you a 125% deposit bonus. You can bet on games or prop bets like maybe first 
quarterback drafted odds. Oh, how things have changed. Spencer Rattler, the betting favorite. Uh, laid an egg this year. Now Matt Corral leads the way, then Malik Willis, Carson Strong, Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell. You'll see some of those quarterbacks coming up in a little bit, but beyond betting, if you do a BetUS, we can hook you guys up with a free jersey. Just please, I beg of you, follow these instructions, especially the first one. Use promo code NFL Daily at chatsports.com slash bet. You got to put down at least a hundred dollars that gets you the deposit bonus and we will hook you guys up with an nfl jersey tons of different options out there not every single player but whatever team you're a fan of there is a star players jersey we can hook you guys up with we can almost guarantee that tons of options like the one you see right now if you have questions or if you just want it on the deal, email us, jersey at chatsports.com. We will need, by the way, your BetUS account number, screenshot of your first bet, plus like, you know, your shipping and, and all that information. That's why you got to email us. But do it by emailing jersey at chatsports.com. I'll put that email for you guys in the description of today's mock draft. Number nine, Charles Cross of the Miami or of Mississippi State to the Miami Dolphins. This pick, by the way, via the 49ers since the Eagles' number three pick is owned by is originally from Miami. This one from San Francisco. Oh, Miami. Uh, offensive line sucks. Charles Cross was a big upside prospect entering this year, and he's played really well. Now, the offense helps, but I think the traits are there for him to be a potential franchise left tackle. Number 10 for the Jets via Seattle. Oops. Kair Elam out of Florida. I, well, I've been inconsistent this year, but good size fits the Jets' style, and man, they need cornerback help. Number 11, the New York Giants. This pick via the Chicago Bears. Kingsley and Barry, a very productive and promising passer this year for South Carolina. I've been impressed by him. Bit of a riser, this pre-draft process. Opposite Aziz Ojolari, there's not that much good play, and Barry and, and could be that guy. Number 12, George Karloftis to the Minnesota Vikings. This is such a good fit if the Mike Zimmer defense is still there. For now, I will operate like it will. Number 13, Ikem Ekwanu. Icky, if you want to call him that, out of NC State. I love this kid. Now, I think that he might slide a bit more than what I think his talent level says he should. You can make a real argument that Ekwanu has been the best offensive lineman in college football this year. He goes to Carolina, there's your left tackle, or maybe guard if you want to, if you want to kick him inside. I play him at tackle. Move him forward. He's a, he's a right tackle, excuse me. Move Mott to the left side. All right, Devin Lloyd out of Utah. I don't love linebackers early, but my God, does Philadelphia need one. They've been playing a bunch of stiffs out there at linebacker. Devin Lloyd's a playmaker. Plays for a small team. He's been great this year. All right, number 15, Malik Willis, Liberty. I am not projecting a maybe veteran trade for Denver, although I could do that, but that's, that's way too far off in the future to guess here for a, for a midseason mock draft. Denver needs help at quarterback, and I think that's very clear. So if I were Denver, gamble on the high upside quarterback. And Malik Willis, I, by the way, I despise Q Freeze's offense. Stop running the football down. Like, throw the ball with Malik Willis. It doesn't make sense. He is a raw developmental process, prospect. He is not ready to go. But the upside is there. If he hits, he's going to be a franchise quarterback. So big risk, big reward with Willis. Now, if you guys want more NFL draft coverage, subscribe and make sure those notifications are turned on. On. That way you don't miss any videos here at Chat Sports. We will have more NFL draft coverage as the season continues. Number 16, the Bengals take the local kid. The Cincinnati corner goes to Cincinnati. How about Sauce Gardner? I love him. He's fun. He's a blast. And I am of the mindset that if your nickname is Sauce and you're a corner, you're, you are bust proof. You're, you're, you're bust proof. First round Lock, got to put him in there. I kid only a little bit. Number 17, DeMarvin Leal. 
He had a lot of hype coming into the year. I don't think he's been as good as he was last year. Not bad, don't get me wrong on that front. But the Chiefs, or the, the Browns, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself there. The Browns, some free agents there on the D-line, upside player. He's played the more DE for AM. I think he's an inside guy. I'd pick him up. All right, the Chiefs now. almost got ahead of myself, right? Chris Olave, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, and not much. I was thinking of a smooth route runner at receiver. I like Olave quite a bit. Drake London, as we get to a little wide receiver run right here, uh, out of USC. I'm a big fan of his. I like him. You got Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley. Now you put Drake London there on the outside as a big-bodied threat. I think it's a really good idea. Traylon Burks now, number 20 out of Arkansas for the New England Patriots. He's played a lot of slot for the Razorbacks, but he's been dominant outside of the Georgia game, which I would blame on the quarterback myself. I like Burks a lot. I think he's a good fit for what the Patriots kind of want to do on offense. If you use two tight ends, Burks is on the outside. You bring in Jacoby Myers, you can still play him in the slot some too. That's all good. I think Burks and London are two really strong risers in this year's draft class at receiver. Now, speaking of receiver, we're not done yet. Who is your favorite one in this year's draft? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments section. No wrong answers, but name a receiver you love this year. Number 21, and I, I never thought we were going to get here. Uh, Kenny Pickett out of Pitt. Goes in round one of the Steelers. Um, Pickett is a different eval. He is the inverse of Malik Willis. Willis has the arm and the upside and the athletic ability. Kenny Pickett, not the same arm. It really is a, a, a traits argument for, for Willis and a more of a what they are steadiness right now in Pickett. I worry about what his upside is. Like, how good is he going to be in the NFL? If you get Kirk Cousins, you're happy with the pick at number 21. If you get Brandon Whedon, you're concerned because Pickett's an older prospect with also very tiny hands. So trait-based teams, measurable-based teams, they're, they're, they're not going to like Pickett quite as much. Garrett Wilson out of OSU goes number 22 here to the Saints because they need more receivers. And Will Willis is great. The technically speaking third OSU receiver – off the board now, Jameis Williams, because remember, he was at OSU, transfers to Alabama. He's been great this year. I am very high on Jameis Williams. I got him going here, 24 to, to the Raiders. They got to replace Henry Ruggs. Jameis offers the big playability that they covet. Number 24 to Dallas, Drake Jackson out of USC. So, Randy Gregory's a free agent. And if he's brought back, you might not keep Tank Lawrence. Here is a potential option at edge for the Cowboys. The Bills now at 25. Darian Kennard out of Kentucky. I love his play. He is a mauler. Is he a tackle? I'm not sold. Maybe he's your Cody Ford replacement if you're Buffalo. All right. I went deep on this name, guys. Ready? Bernard Raymond out of Central Michigan University. A tight end originally, now plays left tackle. He has been dominant for the, the Ch Chippewas this season. Admittedly against Mid-American Conference teams. I, I want a future bookend with Rashawn Slater. I think Raymond could move over to the right side. So Google him if you want. Full warning. Uh, you will get a Google suggestion of a random German math nerd. So just keep that in mind. All right, 27, Andrew Booth out of Clemson to the Buccaneers. I know they, they got some young corners, but they're really banged up. And I like the value here for Booth. He could go maybe 10 picks higher in, even in just this mock draft, but he slides a bit because it's tough to do midseason mock drafts. Number 28, Carson Strong out of Nevada. Now, he definitely has the arm. I, I am a big fan of what he is able to do with his arm strength. The mobility, though, I'm not sold on. And that, that's a red flag for me. Because in the modern day NFL, I really think you need to be mobile, especially early on. So I, 
I think this could be a good fit for him in the Lions style offense. Gamble later round one, pairing with Kayvon Thibodeau. I, I, I have liked Carson Strong for a while. I can go back to like some preseason stuff. I, I, I discussed him. Just the mobility is just, just a little bit of a concern for me. Now, I had four quarterbacks go in, in round one here, which, you know, that's, I don't know about that one. So let's play one of my favorite games, over or under. Over or under, 3.5 quarterbacks taken in round one of the NFL draft. O for over, U for under. All right, four picks up. We'll go faster here. Daxton Hill to the Ravens because you might have to replace Deshaun Elliott. And Hill has played plenty of corner for the, for the uh, Michigan Wolverines. I like him a lot. He's a damn good football player. The Packers take Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. I'm a big time fan of his. Uh, he's made a lot. He makes that quarterback at Penn State, Clifford, and the backups look a lot better than they really are. I like him, and you might lose Devontae Adams, so you better have somebody for Jordan Love to throw to. Tennessee here, I guess I'll go with Jalen uh, Weidermeyer. I'm not sold on him being a, a number one. A round one pick, he might be more of like a early round two guy, but Tennessee badly needs a tight end. And finally, Nick Benito, the edge out of Oklahoma. Chandler Jones and Marcus Golden have played great, but they're free agents, and you might not keep both of them, so I'll throw in Benito here at the back end of round one. All right, so grade my mock draft. A, B, C, D, or F. I try to do what I think teams would do in early November. I make plenty of changes. You can be mean if you want down there in the comments section.